guys, it's Ruthie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe, ring that notification bell, and you get a little notification anytime I make a new video. So, in today's video, I'm going to share some of my tips for traveling with IBD. Because that can be a doozy. I haven't really recorded one of these videos in quite some time because I have been traveling like crazy, going to see friends around the place and my sister who is pregnant and is gonna give birth any day now. I'm going to see her in Maryland a bunch. It's been a summer of traveling so far. I realized that there's a lot of specific things I do in order to be okay with traveling. So I just thought I'd share some of those tips with you guys today. Just in case this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, I highly recommend you go back and look at my health history videos where I kind of talk about what I've been through but in case this is the first video you're watching of mine and you're not gonna do that the briefest health history I can give is I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis at 15 I had my colon removed at 18 it was a three-part total colectomy I had an ostomy bag for six months since those three surgeries, I've had an additional three surgeries due to like scar tissue complications. My most recent surgery was last September. I've had a lot of bowel obstructions, blockages, whatever you wanna call those. I hear it different all the time. And I'm not on any medications right now. I'm not on any immune suppressants, thank God. I've gotten myself off those and I've been doing pretty good considering. And yeah, I think that's probably the briefest possible I can do. But if you wanna hear more about specifics of my health adventures. There's plenty of videos here where I talk all about it. So first thing I always make sure I do before I go anywhere is write. I write a detailed list of the things that I'm going to need while I'm away, of the things I wanna make sure I get done around my house before I go away. Cause I also wanna think about how I'm gonna feel when I get back. And in the past, Traveling for me has really kind of messed me up. If I'm away from my house for more than a few days and then I come back, it takes me some time to like settle back into being home before I can like be productive and like do life again fully. I really try to just do those things my future self will thank me for and get everything settled at the house so that way when I come back from my break, I feel like this is a good space to be in. Like have everything be cleaned, organized, like no rotting food in the fridge, get my laundry done, make my bed all nice, and new sheets and towels and everything out, clean my litter box for sure. So just do all the things around your house that will make your life easier when you return from your travels. I'll also write a really detailed list of the things that I'm going to be doing and the things that I need. Like writing my packing list is really important to me. So I just try to mentally go through the trip already and think about the different things I'm going to want when I'm away. So if I'm going someplace where I know I'm gonna have some like time to kill, where like say one of my friends is working and I'm gonna have to either do work or want like some books or want my sketch pad or coloring book or whatever, things to relax me while I have some free time while I'm away. So I always will like bring all my technology of course and my journal, some good books, not too many books because sometimes I get carried away and I'm like, oh my God, I'm just gonna read all these books on the way and I don't even touch them. So I try to be realistic about it too, which is a new development. I used to just kind of like pack every single thing possible because I'd rather have too much than not enough. Especially if I'm bringing my own car because then I can just use my car for like the backup closet, just like leave everything in there. And I mean, as I'm talking, <laughs> I'm realizing like, I think I might require a lot more things than maybe some people require. And I guess they're not requirements. I'll be like, okay without them. But I like to have my things with me. I've just accepted that about myself because especially traveling with IBD, you really just have to know what makes you comfortable, know what makes you feel at home and safe and happy and be shameless about that and do the things that you need to do. Bring the things you need to bring to feel comfortable and at home. So another really important thing I do to help myself out is meal prep for the trip. Especially if I'm gonna be gone for anywhere close to a week. The day before I leave or even the morning that I leave, I'll cook up a bunch of rice, 
mash up some potatoes and sweet potatoes and tofu. And I'll just bring all that stuff in like Tupperware. And that way I don't have to be a burden to my friends. Like if my friends want to just order pizza or Italian food or something like I obviously cannot eat, they can still do that. And I will be totally fine because I have my food I can eat. And if we get Thai food or something that I can eat, I can still do that. Like it's not super important that I finish all that food. It doesn't really go bad, so it can even be good if by the time I get home, if I refrigerate it and everything. It's really helpful with my peace of mind to just know that I have food. Because sometimes that's something that really stresses me out when I'm going out with friends is thinking about like, what if I get too so hungry and they want to stop and eat somewhere that I can't get anything? Or what if like the only thing I find is going to make me sick? It's just really nice to know that like I have my food with me and everything else is extra. If I can eat something out, awesome. But it's not required. I am gotten. I am not going to wither away. I have my food and I know it's not going to make me sick. And I think that is a really important key to traveling. And also for me, this might be controversial, but I tend to eat way less when I'm traveling because it makes me feel better. I have more energy to socialize and be with the people that I'm with when half of my energy isn't being spent focusing on digesting food. And you know, if you think about human history, people have always had periods of feasting versus fasting. So I just tend to feast when I am home by myself and have easy access to the bathroom and it doesn't really matter too much if I'm in pain. And when I'm out with people and I wanna enjoy my time out with people, then I do what I can to have energy and to show up for the people that I'm with. And eating less food and eating better food is really helpful when it comes to that stuff. But know your body. Some people feel like shit when they don't eat. For me, I feel like I gain energy when I eat less or when I have more time in between my meals. Um, Cause I just feel like there's so much of my mental energy that's spent focusing on the food that's in my stomach when I'm eating. And all of that is just kind of freed up if you don't have that. But always listen to your body. If you are hungry, eat food, always. Don't starve yourself for, because you're going on a trip. Another helpful tip that I think really applies mostly if you are road tripping with a friend or some friends is to be open and honest about your situation with the people you're with. And if you don't feel like you can be open and honest about your health issues, with the people you're with, then one, I would rethink the people that you're with because I think that's really important to be open and honest with your friends about what you're dealing with or what you're thinking about, what your concerns are. I don't think that's a negotiation. And if you're going on like an eight hour drive with someone, you can just let them know you might have to stop a little bit more often than they might be used to. And it is okay, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna get to your destination regardless. If they're an asshole about it, then screw them and find someone else to go on the trip with. I don't know. I'm like, I feel very strongly about that because I have had friends in the past that don't really care or at least are not conscientious and compassionate about my health issues. And I just think life is too short for that. I think there's plenty of people out there who aren't going to have a problem with it and are going to support you and just want to spend time with you. And if you're spending energy on people who aren't like that, then you're gonna be way less likely to find people like that because you're communicating to the universe that you are okay with this level of friendship. When there's so many other better levels of friendship out there where you can truly just speak what's on your heart and have it be received. So yes, being open and honest about what you're currently feeling like in your health, um, I think is so, so important. But I do understand not wanting to talk about it, not wanting to give energy to it, especially when you're with friends, you really just wanna have fun and focus on having fun. And I totally get how you would just not wanna bring it up and not wanna mention it. But we have to think about reality. And the reality is that Worst case scenario, if you get really sick on the trip, you're going to make your life so much easier if you have already filled in your friends about this possibility. 
and if they already have a clue of what's going on with you. It is so much harder, I can speak this from experience, it is so much harder to explain to people what your health is like when you are currently sick. So you can make your future self's life so much easier just by being honest about what you're currently dealing with health-wise or the possibilities of what could happen health-wise. And that way, worst case scenario, if you do get sick and you do have to stop every 20 minutes or you are kind of like doubled over, you don't have to then explain to someone that it's not food poisoning, it's not, you know, like this sometimes happens to you. So it alleviates a lot of stress when you're an open book. There's nothing left to explain. Getting it all out there with your loved ones, with the people you feel safe telling that to, and then just having fun, living your life. And also when I'm making my list for packing, I think about every possible scenario. I bring all the medicines I could possibly need. I bring my Pepto, my Gas-X, my Imodium, my Colace, all the things, even if I really don't think I'm gonna need it. It's so much better to be safe than sorry, I think. I'd always rather have more things that I need than not enough, because it just makes me feel more comfortable on my trip. Now I'm gonna share these. Oh my God, this also matches my outfit, okay. This is the best heating pad I've ever used, ever. And I can thank Anna over at Frost Valley for this recommendation. I'll put the link to purchase these below. It's from like a weird vendor on Amazon and I'm not sure like what their stock is like, So the reason I have two is because I think I broke this one. Um, it's not getting hot anymore. I don't know why. I think it's my fault because I left it plugged in too long. Like you're really not supposed to leave it plugged in. But this is the charger that comes with it. And you just swivel this thingy open like this. And then you plug it in and you just let it sit for like eight minutes. And this bitch will stay hot for three hours, like sometimes even longer. It's incredible. And it's so good for traveling. Like this can be used outdoors, indoors. Like, they're such pretty colors. They really do. Oh my God. I don't want the tag showing. These babies, these babies have been so helpful for me. You know, I think the reason that my first one broke was because I was laying on it like because I sleep on my stomach a lot so I would have this on my stomach and sleep just kind of like laying on it and it does say I didn't read like the warning labels it does say to not put too much pressure on it for too long of a period of time and I was sleeping for like eight hours on it so that probably is what broke it comes like with all this stuff in it and you don't have to refill it or anything um, I don't know how it works, but it's magic and it's amazing and I love it so much. So this has been really helpful for me on my traveling trips. I always have a heating pad. I don't need to be close to an outlet. Um, well, I do for eight minutes, but then I'm good. I can just kind of walk around. And I've been calling it like my practice nephew because I'm going to be an auntie. And when it's warm, it really does feel like a person or something. The first night that I fell asleep with it, I fell asleep with it behind my head like this because I had a headache. And when I woke up in the middle of the night, I thought I was laying on my cat because it was just like this warm liquid behind me. I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. And I was like, oh, <laughs> hey. I really love these things so much. I was thinking about like recording a yoga class with them because when I've been in a lot of stomach pain lately, I kind of just hold this while I'm doing the poses. So this is just another like comfort thing of mine that is really good for me to bring on my trips. It just brings that little piece of home and peace with me. What else, what else? Oh, I also bring all my teas. Like I bring at least three tea bags of all the kinds that I like, um, like my lemon ginger and rose hip and green tea and I don't know. Chamomile, I love chamomile. All like the good teas that I like. Anything that I know makes me feel good, that I know isn't, or I'm not sure if it's gonna be at the place I'm going, I bring it. I, again, rather be safe than sorry. I would just rather have more than I need than not enough, always. Another thing is Pedialyte. 
I've been bringing Pedialyte everywhere I go. I always keep a few, like the packets, the powder packets of it is just so much easier to travel with. I keep like at least three packets of that in my purse at all times. I keep some in my car. I just kind of stash it away because without a colon, if you're out there living with a J pouch, or even if you're just having um, a lot of diarrhea with your IBD, you're so dehydrated. And so often when we feel sick and sluggish and like we don't want to do anything, it's because we're dehydrated. And oftentimes we just kind of drink coffee or drink some caffeine to try to like combat that. But we'd be so much better off to just drink some Pedialyte or just drink extra water. It just gives you that energy that you've been missing, especially when you're out with friends. If you're drinking any amount of alcohol, drink Pedialyte before you go to bed. The hangover is way less severe, I promise you. And yeah, it's just super helpful. Bringing headphones, and we're just gonna keep emphasizing it, bringing anything at all that makes you comfortable. That stuffed animal, that pillow, the blanket, your favorite hoodie, whatever it is that is just like, like you're traveling with home, bring it. Like, just bring the things that make you comfortable. Because as we all know, every symptom with IBD gets so much worse with stress, and traveling can be really stressful. So, just doing whatever you can do to make your trip less stressful. And I think planning makes it way less stressful for me. I don't mean like planning out your days and just having a rigid structure to everything you do, because sometimes I think that can cause more stress than not. I mean planning as far as packing, like planning the things that you will need, thinking about that worst case scenario, what medicines like you don't usually need, but it's like a good thing to have with you, you know, all those things that will just make your life so much easier if the worst case scenario happens. I think bringing a journal and bringing anything to write on is really helpful, especially if you're going on vacations with family or like a big group of friends or just a group of people, especially if it's prolonged to like anywhere close to a week or more. Sometimes you can get really lost, or at least I do. Sometimes I really start to lose myself by the end of it. Like I'm having a lot of fun with my friends the whole time and like talking and getting a lot of ideas and sharing a lot of ideas. But then after a certain point, I just start to feel like a shell of myself. And I'm just like, I don't even know what I like and I don't even know who I am. But like having my journal with me, and even if I'm not writing, just like reading through some old journals or just word vomiting, whatever I'm feeling, just unloading the conversations that we've had or whatever is a really good centering tool to just kind of remind you who you are in the midst of all these people that you're sharing space with. Just give you that little bit of security of yourself, just reminding yourself of yourself, that you always have you. Even in the midst of a crowd, in the midst of a lot of activity, finding that stillness, finding that moment to just check in with yourself, recognize how, how it's going. How are you liking the trip that you're on? How are you feeling physically? Uh, were there any worries that confirmed themselves? Were there any worries that never happened, you know? It's really nice to keep inventory of that stuff, especially for your future self, because it's happened before where I kind of like word vomited a journal before I left of all my fears of like what could possibly go wrong on this trip because I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was just nonstop like, oh my God, but then what if this happens and then that happens and then what would I do if this happens, blah, 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 blah. It wouldn't stop playing. Like it was just like very intrusive thoughts just throughout my whole days leading up to the trip. I was like, I'm not even gonna enjoy this trip. This sucks. Like I'm freaking out about this. This is like my first time traveling in a while. And my therapist was really helpful when I was offloading on him about all that because took a way different approach than I was trying to take with myself. And I was kind of saying to myself before, like, no, that's like, that's not going to happen. This is what's actually going to happen. It's going to, and I was kind of like saying no to the negative and trying to fill it in with positive. But his approach to it was, okay, let's sit with this negative. Like, okay, so say this does happen. Say the worst case scenario of your friends deciding that they hate you and don't want you to stay there anymore. Like walking through like the worst case scenarios. And what that does is really just remind you that you're good. <laughs> like you're good no matter what. The worst case scenario could happen. It could always happen. 
your friends could just out of the blue kick you out of their house, I guess. I mean, I don't, I think that's a very unlikely scenario for most people, but it's always a possibility. And then when you think about that as happening, if you imagine, if you walk through that, imagine that actually happening, knowing that you still have your car, you know, you can sleep in your car, whatever support systems you have there that you are going, just walking yourself through the scenario that you're most afraid of, whatever the scenario is, that's like your biggest fear of what could go wrong on the trip, sitting with that, maybe journaling about it, just writing it through, pretending that it's happening, and then seeing what you would do, seeing what comes out, seeing what comes up for you. It's just a really great reminder of our resilience and our ability to handle the worst case scenarios. And you can also remind yourself of all the worst case scenarios you've already lived through, of all the things that have gone really wrong. And somehow you made it out and you're still here. So it's okay and it's gonna continue to be okay. There's just experience and lessons to be learned. Just reminding yourself of that reality, that worst case scenario, you're still gonna be okay. No matter what happens, you have yourself. Just nurturing that relationship with yourself so you feel more comforted by tuning into yourself, which really is a daily, a moment to moment practice. I don't think it ever comes effortlessly. I think that you have to continually remind yourself to practice and continually remind yourself of your power, of your strength, of your resilience, of your love, and of all the great things that there are about you, especially when you are feeling sick, especially when you're feeling anxious and nervous about an upcoming trip or the way that your physical health is doing or just going through all those worst case, like I go into the worst flare up of my life and I am out with all my friends. Like that's a possibility, you know? And if it happens, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna make it through. It might suck. It might be a really tough thing to work through, but you're gonna do it. You have no choice but to, and you're going to survive. You're going to thrive and you're gonna grow. And I think not letting your IBD take over your life is no small feat, but if you can do it even just one time here and there, you give yourself so much strength. You validate so much of your strength, so much of your power to be resilient, to do it anyway, to be scared and do it anyway. It just builds that trust with yourself. And the first time you do it, the first time you go on that trip, even though you were like, I am probably gonna get sick, this is probably gonna be really bad, so no, 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 I can't go, I can't go, I can't go, but then you do it anyway, that first time you do it, it feels like you're jumping off of a cliff, literally, but it builds the trust you have with yourself. And even if you do get sick, you did it anyway. You took that chance on yourself. You tested your strength and you might've found a new limit, you know? Like it's happened to me before where I've been like, yeah, I'm gonna go on this trip, I don't even care. And I did get sick. And the worst things that I could possibly think would happen did happen. And that's when I found my limit, you know? I found a limit that time. I realized that I was overdoing it. And if I think back, look back even at like my worries in the journal like i knew i was overdoing it i knew i was stretching myself thin but i still did it and i'm proud of myself for doing it because i found that limit i learned to recognize that feeling i had before of like ooh, this might actually be too much i actually don't think i can go on this trip i don't think i can handle it and recognizing whether that is just fear and just kind of like a bullshit voice or if that's real that could be a real thing And like I said, it's happened to me before where I felt that feeling and I didn't listen to it because I was like, oh no, it's just a fear thought, like I'm, I'm gonna be fine. And I wasn't fine. And then I recognized that that was the truth. That was a true voice warning me about this. And you know, lesson learned. And now I have a little bit more of an idea of the voices in my head and when they are helping me out and being honest and when they are just kind of being bullshit and testing my strength. So it really takes 
so much practice. But I don't, I don't think there's any other way to live life, especially with a chronic illness, especially with IBD. I think if you want to live anywhere near a normal life, we have to accept the fact that we're going to have to do more than some people. And it's okay. And there's always going to be people who have to do more than we have to do to be normal. You know, normal is doesn't exist. Normal is personal. It's your normal. It's my normal. It's whatever is normal to you. Only you, you know what that is. And only you know what can help you feel better. Only you know what can help you feel like normal and like your home. So setting yourself up for all those feelings, all the feelings you want to feel. And also just taking a moment to meditate before you leave or just sit and visualize how you want your trip to go, like the best case scenario for this trip and how you want to feel during the trip. I think that's really important. Visualize the feelings that you want to feel while you're away. Do you want to feel adventurous and excited and happy? Do you want to feel peaceful and serene and receptive? Do you want to feel a mixture of all those things, you know? Just get clear with yourself about what you're trying to get out of this situation. And that goes for everything. That's not even just for traveling. That goes for just your day. Like when you're in bed at night and you're thinking about what you want to do tomorrow. Perfect example is my night last night. I was laying in bed feeling really anxious about all the things I have to do before I go on a trip on Wednesday. And I was like, oh, I have so much to get done and I only have like two and a half days to do it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of like working myself up about all the things I have to do. And then I was like, you know, what do I have to get done tomorrow? I'm just gonna focus on tomorrow. And then I made a voice note to myself. Maybe I'll put it in here. Maybe, maybe not. But I made a voice memo to myself and I said, tomorrow I will wake up, I will take my vitamins, I will drink my water, I will do yoga, I will meditate, I will set up my computer for the live meditation, I will wash my face, wash up, I will set up my makeup next to my computer so that I can go right from doing the meditation right to doing my makeup, I will sit in the same seat and I will record the YouTube video This is where we are in the story. And then when I'm done recording, I will finish by 11 or 12, the latest, and it's 11.18, so. Then I will cook my food, I will eat breakfast, and I will sit and I will edit the wedding I have to work on for the rest of the day. And I'm on track to do that. And I think the only reason I am doing that is because I set it and because I visualized it and I planned it out. And if I were to just kind of fall asleep wake up and be like, oh, what do I have to do today? I have so much I have to do today. I would not have thought of this good order, this efficient order that I have now that is allowing me to do all this stuff. And that is not even close to every day. That is like maybe once a week if I'm good, like sometimes more than once a week if I'm doing really good or if I have the pressure of like a trip coming up where I don't really have time to waste, then I'm good with this stuff. But I usually do the latter. I usually wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I have so much to do today. I don't know where to start. And then I just don't get anything done. So it's fine wherever you're at in that journey today. Oh, I think another good one is having a note section on your phone of like quotes that kind of center you back to where you're at. Um, Like every storm runs out of rain or rain makes the flowers grow or whatever sort of quote really resonates with you at this point in your life i think it's really helpful to like have a note section of quotes like that in your phone let me see if i have that in my phone <laughs> yeah so i have two quotes in my note section right now that's turn your shit into fertilizer that's a great one and then when you get nervous focus on service oh that is such a good one when you get nervous focus on service when you get nervous focus on service That is story of my life at this moment. So I think traveling with IBD really just comes down to knowing yourself, knowing what you need to be comfortable, to feel as less stress as possible, and setting yourself up so that you have everything you need to be comfortable on the trip. And when you return from the trip, your house is as calming and stress relieving as possible. You don't wanna return to like your clothes, all over the floor and 
rotten food in the fridge, dirty dishes in the sink. Like you want to return to a clean house so that all you have to do is drop off your bags, unpack them slowly throughout the week if you're like me or throughout the few weeks and just get back to your life. So I hope this video was really helpful for you. I hope it gave you some good ideas of how you can make traveling a little less stressful when you got IBD. This might be a part one. I might think of a few more tips and make a part two to this. But if there's any thoughts that came to your mind while you were watching this, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know how these videos are working with you guys. It's just really gonna help motivate me to do more of this if you like it. Also, if you have any questions, any ideas for future videos or things you wanna hear me talk about, that is so helpful for me to just like, for the brainstorming session of making these videos. So, do not hesitate, don't be shy. Reach out, reach out to me if you wanna to talk to me, I am here. Any way you can find to contact me, I'm sure you can find multiple ways. So, you are never alone. I know living with especially bathroom issues um, at any age, but especially when you're younger, I think feels really isolating and really alone. And I never want anyone out there to feel like you are alone. I felt that way for many years and it's not true. You know, like you're never alone in your struggles. There's always people out there who understand what you're going through. And if you don't have anyone in your life who really understands what you're going through and you just, are craving someone to talk to who gets it from a first-hand account, I'm here for you. You can seriously email me, send me a message on anything. I will always respond as soon as I'm able to. I got you, you know, like it's fine. We're gonna get through this together. IBD sucks, but it is our greatest teacher. And I truly, truly believe with all of my heart that we are blessed people. Sensitive bodies, chronic health issues in general, are blessed with an amazing and powerful and forceful internal teacher. Everyone's body is their best teacher, but when you have a sensitive body like ours that gets sick often, it is a really fast boot camp of a teacher, you know? So give yourself some love today, share that love with others, and yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. There are more videos on the way, I promise. I'll see you in the next video. We need to have another moment of appreciation for my makeup help, I'm sorry. Oh, I love it. Oh. Pink on top and top. This is a complete accident. It's a very happy accident. And my earrings too. Earrings by Lisa. Shout out Lisa Pisa. Oh, also bring all of your favorite makeup and hair products. Like fuck it, just pack all of it because the power of makeup. I would not have recorded this video today if I did not do my makeup in a really fun way. And as soon as I did my makeup in a fun way, I was like, oh my God, now I can't wait to do the video. It's real, it helps. Okay, 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 okay. I think I'm done. Bye-bye.